Yeah, man, my be greedy. I was doing that damn cooking shit. Yeah, they come, keep coming back and eat. If you cooking, why not? Bro, y'all know what we doing. Right, it's we not for every, it's not to get full. We're not, this isn't a meal. Yeah. This is a motherfucking sample. It's the same people kept just getting back in line, getting back in line, getting back in line. You know, to be the face of a company, whatever, like you're supposed to be pleasant. But the good thing is this, if the shit was garbage, they wouldn't come back. They ain't gonna get back in line, yeah. They wouldn't come back. So that's either to your, your, the seasoning. I was looking for my packet. I cooked four steaks this week. I'm like, where's my crowd of pop? Don't worry, I got I 2,000 in the house. <laughs> I was on but they be salt and pepper. Me. Bro, I started carrying around a book bag. Mm -hmm. Like I went to Publix, right. I had a book bag on. Then my come up with all that conversation. Hey, Crowder, big fan, yeah, hell. Go on the website, use the QR code. <laughs> all that is is selling CDs out the trunk. Bro, that's exactly what I, I that's pushing that shit, is, pushing bro. that shit like dope. What up? Hey! I, I heard he ain't shit. feeling I well. Nah, we, 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 God got us. What up, boy? How you doing, <laughs> man? Good to meet you too, man. That's my man right yeah, there. Go hunting. Do you hunt or no? Uh, I'm a start. You gonna start? Yeah. You know when you start getting money, you start doing stuff. Just oh, like oh. golf and all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find new friends. I'm gonna be honest, I ain't never going hunting. My nephews. Took them hunting, and it sounded all gung ho because they were shooting cans off the uh -huh. off the motherfucking fence. Yeah, and then hit that squirrel, pow, and then that bitch dies, and that bitch hit the ground and started shaking and convulsing. Man, it fucked them kids up. Damn. Yeah, that one. See, they, 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 <laughs> and then you got to be Fuck careful up. too because sometimes License. when you go hunting, yeah. you might find some bodies. Mm -hmm. Fred, we ain't in Jacksonville, Fred. That making this dark as hell. <laughs> Did you see the girl that got uh, escorted out the Rod Wave concert? Oh man, she was popping that. And thing. she was pee popping. <laughs> hey, Duval go to hey, So no, so she was getting kicked out of the Rod Wave concert, and the security guard was bringing out the police. The police. Two of them. And when they were bringing out, she was <laughs> <laughs> she, she was popping that thing on the way out. What was this? It just went viral. Yeah, this was the Rod Wave yeah. last week. Called yeah. drugs. <laughs> nah, that's, <laughs> that's called Wade. a good show. Man, that's drugs. He'll do something to you. They said his concerts are crazy. I just went, actually. Yeah. Said the fans. Yeah, I just wanted to see him fall off the uh, yeah. balcony. RC yeah. did, did he do it? A... Huh? Did he do it? Yeah. Oh, he did it. Hold up. Limitless. Bigger stomach guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Nigga send me cap in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way up in it, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Marco Summers, funny Marco. Welcome to the pivot. <laughs> this is Freddie T. I'm RC. That's Channing. We put y'all two on the side because y'all two are actually funny. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, y'all have something in common. Uh, both of you guys up. stand up. I, I done jumped into it, bro. Yeah, Desi yeah. told me too. I've been watching it. Oh, okay. Yeah, talk yeah. to Desi. Desi, yeah. my ace, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. We yeah. got to get together, man. He, got he heard talk. crickets. He said he heard crickets, though. Bro. Who? At some point in his first. I hear that. I hear that. He got a tour coming up, man. Yeah. Let, me, let me jump on. Give me, 10, give me 10, 15 in the front. I knew it. It's I, on you. That's pressure. Actually, it's funny because I started doing stand up because of Desi. So I, I was like, ah. I was scared of it at first, and then I went out to a show with him, and he actually did it in Miami, Orlando, Florida. I think that's where he made you start, too, right? Yeah. You went out. Yep. And it was funny, and I went out there, and I just felt the crowd, and I just felt the engagement, and I was like, this was meant for me to do. And from there, I just kept going and kept going, so. Was, were, you, were you good right away? Like, did, did you I, feel like you had it yeah. right away? Yeah, I ain't had, I ain't, I ain't messed up. But it's reading a class, like, reading a room, you know, and just feeling, giving them what they need, right. so. But you say you were scared of, not in the sense of scared, but nervous yeah, more so? I, I, I start realizing that I got anxiety, you know what I'm saying? So even with a lot of people in a room, it's a lot of attention on you, and it's expectation, like, they expect something, you know? I started off doing the pranks, and me doing that, they don't know, you know what I'm saying, what I'm about to do, so it was even better, because my funny stuff used to be unexpected, so now when you see me on stage, you expect me to be funny, mm -hmm. so. I don't, I'm not that type of funny. I'm just like being me. So, but I had to click in and be you on stage. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing too. When I did it, it was like uh, even if you kill a motherfucking joke, you got to set up you know, and you hit them. Bam! Everybody mm -hmm. fall out laughing. Ah! You see the whole crowd. So you feed off of it. And ten seconds later, the motherfucker say, "Ha ha ha ha!" and look right back at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do it again. But sometimes too, I learned like watching Dave Chappelle. People are listening. 
I had to learn that when you got the room. Like, all right, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So that's a good feeling because when you watch Dave Chappelle, you probably might not laugh to it, but you paying attention to him. He would smoke a whole pack of Newports yeah. right in your face. Yeah. And yeah. he was like, damn, like this guy's good. And yeah. it's the story time and actually having a voice to get the room. So, and I learned that, you know what I'm saying, through Richard Pryor and watching him where it's not about ha, 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 like people really be tuned in. Like, you know what I'm saying? So and, I had and, to learn that. And the crazy thing I saw, comedians don't respect you till you get on stage. Cause mm -hmm. I talked to Chris yeah. Spence before. I did something with Chris Spence or roast with him years ago. Cool with Desi. Uh, Tracy Morgan was on Inside NFL. He mm -hmm. talked to me. Monique reached out to me, but it was always after I got on stage. Yeah, yeah, Before yeah. it's like, oh, you're funny? Yeah, you're mm -hmm. funny. Oh, you can really get on stage. And that's what I saw from being on stage the first yeah. time. It's like, that's when you get comedians respect when you can actually go up there. Because, man, nigga, that shit ain't I easy. think that, that separates pro from semi-pro. Like, when you can go on stage mm -hmm. and really do it. Because at your show, you kept the crowd's attention the entire time. And I'm over there, I'm critiquing you. I'm like, all right, this is what we get when we're on the road. Right, we've heard a lot of the stories, and this is what we get when you're on the stage. You're the same fucking person. Wow. You fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy as hell. One of my favorite show songs is this, uh, a song by uh, Big Sean, and in the song he says, "It took ten years to become an overnight success." Mm -hmm. Right, and for you, it would seem like your recent success is immediate. Mm -hmm. Right, like all of a sudden, you know, you're you're everywhere. You're, you're viral every single week, but it did take pranks and it did take continuing to work, continuing to apply your craft. What has it been like for you to now be in so much of the spotlight after working and grinding? What I guess if it was music, it would be like underground to mm -hmm. get to this point. I say it's a lot of more thinking and focusing now and respecting your space. So when you get a new chapter, you have to become a man as you grow. Right. So like, and that's with the ladies, the girls and my friends. So we're coming at a point where you get your pack and I have to respect the space and they do too because one bad egg could like ruin your whole moment. You get what I'm saying? Because right now I'm on the spot like now. So it's just like my friend do something, they talk to me, you know? So now I'm learning that as we go where I have to protect myself and I have to actually start being more better with myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If that yeah. makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Like it's now I'm like becoming, it's like now I'm in college where everything matters now. And then at first it didn't. When I was doing one, I was just under the radar. So the bigger you get, the more pressure becomes on you as like, I can't do what I used to do no more. I can't. And that's one thing that I learned from Kevin Hart because I see when he, certain jokes they used to do when he was on there, he can't do those jokes no more. You know now, so it's like the bigger you get, the more you have to realize you impact in the world and you have to become likable. And that's one thing. And I look at like Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg started off like, you know, fuck the police, gin and juice, I'm a thug, but he changed his whole image and now he on the show with, you know, Ellen. And you know, he's likable now and it took away from the old Snoop Dogg, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where we used to see him as with the dickies and smoking the weed, like, fuck it. Like, well, he still smoke. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, this <laughs> that image of Gin and Juice when he came out kicking the polos, like, yeah. from Baby Boy, that person, he changed likable. So once you get in this thing, you have to be likable and respect the space and read the room. You gonna get TSA pre? Huh? Are you gonna get TSA pre? Because yeah. I heard you ain't got TSA pre. Nah, I, I didn't know I was gonna get this far. <laughs> I didn't, so I didn't, know, I didn't know about it. I was like, hey, yeah. I used to work at Popeyes. I never thought about traveling and stuff. So I was just, I was thinking I was gonna be cooking birds all day. So you, you and this dude, he just got TSA pre check. And what you got now, clear? Well, I got all that shit. I, I got every, go I walked to the airport. I'm a king. Yeah. Yeah. Come on through, Mr. Crowder. Let's go, Mr. Crowder. I gotta get my passport too. I ain't got. You got a passport? Nah, I didn't. I'm from Kansas City, and y'all, y'all been down there. There ain't nothing down there. All I had was just. Me and the nine of five. So. And the Chiefs. Yeah. You got the Chiefs. But I wanted to uh, go back and ask you, you mentioned about Kevin Hart. You had him on the show. Yeah. What were those conversations like off camera? Like what sort of message did he give you off camera? Because we had him on the show and away from the interview, like he came back, he was like, man, y'all killing it. This, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Trying to help us get in position. Mm -hmm. What things did he share with you off camera that we didn't necessarily hear? Patience. Mm -hmm and patience, patience, patience. And I remember a point when I talked to Kevin Hart a year ago before I got to sit down with him. In my head, I just remember the conversation. He was like, Mark, I just need you to have patience. I, want, I, I see you doing your thing. I want to work with you. So in my head, as you know, a young boy coming from where I come from, I'm like, then he got the power to change my life. Hurry up. <laughs> right. So I'm like, I got Kevin Hart number like when I call him. So in my head, I'm just like, I'm waiting on Kevin to like push the button on me. And 
I just remember like, damn, like he let me down. Like he ain't, you know what I'm saying? I start calling him. He start like, you know, he busy. But then he end up telling me patience. So when everything happened from like, you know, like the whole D Herbo thing happened. And then he just like, man, now it's time. You know what I'm saying? I want to come and sit down with you and let's get past that step. And it was just good timing. And that's what we said. Perfect timing is for everything. And that was a big step. So I start to learn too, is patience. Mm -hmm. So like, you know what I'm saying? Relationships yeah. are everything. So I just feel like I was happy that I had that relationship with him to be able to like, all right, now I'm here. Yeah. But as a young kid, I'm like, hey man, come change. Hey, hurry up, help me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? So, and then I'll just start to look at it as a bigger, like bigger thing. But I learned patience and that's what he told me. I told you, man, like patience and it's still gonna be another levels. And even though now I sit down with him and we had a conversation, my mom like, you gonna do a movie with him now? Next and all that. And people just think everything like that. It might be three years from now, yep. I do something with him, you know, but it's patience. So that's one thing that he told me is just. You brought it up, the G Herbo Southside thing. You mm -hmm. said the thing. What was the thing? Because mm -hmm. we saw it from the edited version. Uh -huh. Explain what that thing was <laughs> when, you know what I'm saying? They, they, I took it as disrespectful. Yeah. What happened? Uh, it was, it was, um, again, I come from playfulness. I play, like, I got brothers from there. So I understand when people are, like, trolling and being aggressive. So when I have my show, I have an image of, like, when we walk away, I want them to see a brand new part of you that they never seen. So as it's going on, and I understand whoever they are and how they play stuff, that's just who they are. But in my head, I got to go to, let's get away from the street rap. Let's get away from the hardcore. Like, you know, like, let's have a pull out a moment. I mean, me and you talk about eggs. How many eggs <laughs> come in the box and it go viral, you know? Right. So I wanted to pull that moment out of, you know, with him and Southside. So I feel like as it's going on, I was like, damn, like, I'm like, I hope it stops. I hope we get to the point I'm trying to get to. And then it just kept going on and on and on. And I didn't want to put it out at first. And then they wanted it out. So I cleaned it up even then. I tried to clean up. I took out a lot of stuff. Like I wanted to still protect the image because I still stand with us because I don't feel like they deserve I to get attacked. It. You know, so I don't feel like I'll be the victim because I grew up playing around with people. So I understand I can get played with, you know? So it was dark because I had an agenda with them and they had an agenda. So their agenda was like, shit, fuck it. Like we going in at you, you know? And I could have snapped out and like, you know, match that energy, but that's not my show is. That's not what I do, you know? Like, then it's taking away the concept, you know? So that was that. I just feel like they had an agenda and my agenda was this. And I'm not really good on two and two actions. Like, you know, two people going at you back and forth. Now, if it was one-on-one, -on -one, we could have went all day, but it's like, damn, you got me, you get me. Like, you know, so mm -hmm. it was just like that. Like, yeah. it's two agenda. So it's, it's still a respect to them. And it was, a, it was a learning experience for me. Even though if I go through, just with y'all, if y'all go through and it's a dark moment on the show, y'all still stand up like, hey man, let's cut the cameras. We need to, hey, you can't be doing that here. So I could have stood up and did that, but in my head I didn't. So that's my learning to respect myself and my team because I still could have stood up. I'm 30 years old, so yeah. I got to take blame on. What did you learn from that about the business? Um, obviously the, the personal interactions are what they are, mm -hmm. but that's a business situation. And no matter what, not only is open thoughts mm -hmm. a business or the comedy show, a business, Marco the brand, mm -hmm. Marco Summers is, is a business. Right. So from that standpoint, with all the attention that it got, with people truly coming to support you in the mm -hmm. way that you were treated, what do you feel like you learned from that situation? Patience. Again, just learn able to speak up. Because I'm so chill, I'd be like, all right, it's cool. So I have to speak up. I'm the one that be able to walk away from something. And I was the one when we in some shit, I'm like, let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, and my brothers and I'm like, fuck that. They disrespect me. I'm like, let's leave. If we can leave, we can leave. So I always had that in my head of just walking away from some stuff. You're going to have to stand up and stand on business. Like, hey, right. you can't be doing this. I think the thing is, though, what I get from that is if you said you've always been like that, you stayed authentic. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I grew up with not funny Marco, but Marco Summers, and you would have acted out or acted a certain way, I probably would have saw that as like, that's not even who he is right. or he's changing. And so for you to handle it that way to me is more mature than anything because right. in a heat of a moment and something that could have been different and got you out of character, mm -hmm. you didn't allow it to, you know, you said your pops was a street dude. You obviously went the opposite way. I heard you were Great mm -hmm. marijuana dealer as well. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> no, but, but you said you went the opposite way of uh, you said you went the opposite way of what your pops was. Mm -hmm. Like what were, what was your relationship like though? It was it was I was young, so I just I remember him being around in our life and picking us up, dropping us beside a girl house, and we had a, his grandma. My grandma was like the best, so he always pick us up and. 
drop us off with my grandma or his girls. So it was just that. He was really like, you know what I'm saying? He'd take us to Chuck E. Cheese and boom, no, don't tell your mom, I'm dropping me off with Stacy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, we got Stacy house and Stacy giving us what she want because she love our daddy. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. then he get into it with Stacy, then we meet Kendra. So it was just different women that we had and then my grandma. So I feel like in our generation, they want you to be after your dad so much. I feel like that's what hurts us sometimes because I feel like when they see your dad do something, they expect you to do it. You know, and it's just like sometimes you're going to develop your own character. And I feel like, you know, even if y'all play ball, y'all kids play, but they're going to expect the same thing out of y'all. And sometimes your son might not meant to be the star. He could be a good role player, you know, but I feel like as they see who your daddy is or what you come from, they like, oh, you got to be just like your daddy, mm-hmm. you know? I couldn't imagine what Brian would probably go through. Like, we don't expect him to be, yeah. and he might just be him. Let him be him. Don't put the expectation on you. And I feel like that's one thing that we do when it comes from that, like our pops, and they know that in the legacy. And this is like, hey, your daddy's a street dude, but you funny. And they used to make me feel like, you know what I'm saying? I was wrong for what I was doing because he was like, your daddy was, yeah, he used to check your daddy. It couldn't be your daddy. So I had to learn that just being from the hood where they had try to put that picture on you mm-hmm. for being like who they seen, where you come from. Yeah. So you was in KC. You was moving packs or snacks? No, I, I tried selling weed one time. I just said you was a great marijuana dealer. No, I tried, I tried to give you packs. One time? One time, and it went wrong. A nickel bag? No, I got I got, <laughs> I got some, and, and I was trying to flip it, and I made the, I made less money. And I said, this ain't for me. <laughs> Hold up. And I needed instruction. So my, <laughs> as I'm trying to get it off, I called my brother, and I'm like, how, what this go like? What this go for? And I'm on the phone. A dude already like, what the fuck? Like, why are you on the phone? Like, you know, I'm like, let me get my prices right. So <laughs> that, yeah, um, I tried doing that. that but see, Freddie T, I yeah. tried to give him credit as a great marijuana dude. Nah, it was not great, and that's why he went like this. Nah, because it was not. Nah, that was a one and done. Like he, he that was a one and done. I'm counting the money back and like I ain't getting what I'm supposed to get. <laughs> That was that they was nice. The, the, the Timu discount. What you have? A a, a, a zip. Uh, <laughs> Y'all gonna hit me? Ready to the face? They want all the information. Yeah, yeah, he, look, obviously out. he's moved on to bigger and better things. No, it wasn't even that. It was it did, the thing didn't start. Like that's the thing. It's just like I just get. I just got. If you don't know what's going on in the room, read the room. They gonna get you. Like, all right, okay, yeah, right. This, yeah. He go goofy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was, you know, and I just tried to get a little money. You know, just like, oh, let me try it. You know, oh, like boy. that wasn't me. And I was like, nah, this ain't me. I'm good because I don't smoke or nothing. So it's kind of like it's kind of like good. me getting a bag from RC for a hundred, saying, Chan, here you go. Eighty dollars. Right. Now I'm in the hole. And then you plug them. That's the thing. You my boy. I will give you for eighty. And then you try to be nice. And then you look back like, damn. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's how I was. Got to stand on business. I'm yeah. the kingpin, though. You heard that? <laughs> I'm the kingpin. The way that Freddie said it, I'm the guy. Nah, you a kingpin? Because nah, nah. he said he got to get it for me and then sell it to you. So you the low man. And you shot him 100? Nah. That ain't no kingpin. He, he's not the low man. He's actually the fiend. <laughs> I got 100 on me right now. What my man? <laughs> that's crazy. But, Mark, I want to ask you, man, because when you, when you look it up, I think the... We do research. All of us do. Uh-huh. Before we have some money. It, it it paints you as like a golden child. Mm-hmm. Had your mama, had your dad. You know that struggle, yeah, the single yeah. mama. No, you had a mama and daddy. Yeah. You was a great student. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it painted yeah. you as like there, there's no struggle yeah. and everybody sees the fun and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you speak about your dad and what he did. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a street guy. But like, do you keep that from the from the world? No, nah, not necessarily that. I Now that I'm doing stand-up, I can explain my story. But before then, I just came up and I just started. You know, the thing that really got me into being a comedian is because I used to struggle in school with reading and spelling. So once I developed, like, this is who I am, and I can't spell or read, y'all can't, y'all can't fuck with me. Like, because I, you can't make fun of me or something that I'm accepting. So then that's when I started being a class clown, you know? So and that's where it came from when it comes to, like, what you battling with. And if you're insecure about it, accept it. And if you don't like it that much, change it. So I became a comedian as in school because I was a class clown and... That was my thing. So, and that just grew me up. And, you know, my mama was on Section 8 and everything. So yeah. I never really seen a mama get up and work and everything like that. So she was just, you know, a government, you know, mm-hmm. mother. You know what I'm saying? And my dad was a street dude. So, and then we stayed in the complex and everybody liked us. So I'm just thinking this shit, this shit normal. Like, you know what I'm saying? So just me wanting more for myself, I don't even know where it came from. It's just like, I just wanted more and I started getting jobs. And one thing I did, I always kept a job. But if I didn't like it, I quit. <laughs> I used to lie a lot. Like I was, I used to like, 
My thing to get jobs, I used to put I was white on the application, and I get in there. <laughs> I was Marco Summers could be. Yeah, or Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> so you just put white on the application. Yeah, to get me in there. Because Target wouldn't hire me. And then I did that one time. He's like, damn, hold on. He's like, this is something they matching up. I'm like, oh, my back. I accidentally clicked it. <laughs> and another thing, too, I remember I used to just get jobs because I used to, uh, I fill out an application and I call and I'd be like, hey, y'all, like somebody left me a voice, like somebody called me three times. I filled out an application and my voicemail ain't set up. So can y'all like pull up my application? Oh, somebody calls you. What's your name? And then I'll come in for an interview. So I used to finesse my way into jobs. And I remember just always would kept a job. And I remember I worked at the water department. And I started doing videos, and that was for the city. This was the best job I had, and I started doing videos, and it was just, like, going viral. And I was like, you can't work for the city if you're going to do this, so quit your job or go out there, like, the comedy and do your videos. And I was like, I'm going to quit. That was the worst that I did at the time because I lost everything, but I just kept going. That's crazy. Listen, let's go back real quick because Chan talked about your mom and your dad. Uh, you sister. got a sister, right? Yeah, I got a couple of sisters. They, they, they. What about the sister you talked to Chris Brown about? Uh, <laughs> so look, I have, most of my interviews, I create a picture. I don't have a twin sister. So you ain't got no sister that look the, like Did you. you see the picture he posted? But look, one, she taller but than him. The picture, the I just randomly wanted to do awkward pictures with my assistant. So, and after I put them out, the world started creating, this must be a sister. So I took it and ran with it. Like, okay. So I'm learning through my career, just do it. And it's going to find a way to work for you. So that's just like, I'm learning, just do it. And it's going to find a way to work. And it's meant to be. So. Just with the pictures, I was like, oh, okay, let's do that. And they started going viral. Like, this got to be a sister. He was talking about, I'm like, oh, damn, let's use that. So that's one thing I do just in my role with just getting up and trying it. Just don't be like, you know, everything ain't need a plan, you know? So right. I just be getting up and doing stuff. Well, you said everything doesn't need a plan. I think, like, everybody does this job a different way. Right. Like, even the three of us do it differently, which is the cool part about our show, mm -hmm. that Fred's going to bring something out of you. Channing will. Hopefully, I will. Like, that's the way... We work, and we actually don't talk about it before it starts. Right. And so you just, no what agenda. happened? What, huh? No agenda. No agenda. Yeah. But for you, you said, like, going into the Herbo South Side, you had, I want to have this conversation and bring this moment out mm -hmm. of them. How do you prepare for each show? Because when you sat down with Kevin, Kevin, you know, because he was he's a comedian yeah, as yeah. well. He was like, Marco, did you prepare for this? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So when you go into these different interviews, how do you come up with, because you are playing a role as an interviewer, but mm -hmm. then on each and every one, you bring out something different from the people that are your guests. Exactly. How do you make that decision, this is what I want? Reading the room. I just did, even with me doing Nicki Minaj, I went in with nothing on the paper. I was like, I want to read her energy and create wow. something with me and her. Because when you have an agenda, sometimes it could go left. And some people meant to have agendas, like rappers like Blueface and stuff, like, because there's so much going on around them. Let me get this out of you because the world want to know. And some people, you have to watch, like, you know, what they've been through. You got to respect. So don't go too far off because you don't want to throw them off. Like, is he trying to, you know, play with me or go here? So, you know, that's like what y'all, like you said, y'all ain't coming in like, this is what we want to know about him. Let's right. get this out of him. So it's not like interrogation, like when you sit down with yeah. the police and they, they warm you up and they're like, boom, this is what we need from you. So I, that's not a style of interview I like. I just like where we bring out, like, this is what we're doing. This is what we're standing on. You know what I'm saying? You might cry. You might walk away laughing. You might, but our job is to bring out something new that nobody's seen, you know, so. Yeah. so you had no idea you was about to spray all them goddamn sprays and Nicki Minaj's no. perfume. And when you put that goddamn chicken wing in your jacket pocket, <laughs> nah, and I'm Anthony just... Edwards, that was, that was all off the cuff. Yeah, it was just like, and it just go, and I'm like, okay, let's just do this thing. One thing I'm good at is listening and thinking. So as you're talking, I'm getting ready to develop the answer as you're talking. It's a gift and a curse, because sometimes when we got our women, we don't listen to them, and it's like, I'm ready to answer, because I hear you talking, but we don't listen to the full thing. So it's a gift and a curse that I got, because as you talking to me, asking me a question, I'm developing an answer. And now on the other side, as I get out, you know, something, and I ask Nikki about her album sales, I'm developing, okay, let me hit her with something dumb. Like, mm -hmm. let's develop this, you know, like, yeah. and then boom, hit her with it. So it's development, it's just my mind just just wondering is, and wondering. Is the infamous stare, is that when you're, is that the moment you're processing the next question? Mm, yeah, as you talk. Kind of like how you're almost looking at me right yeah. now. Yeah. See, but I talk slow. Yeah. So you got plenty of time to get yeah. your shit together. <laughs> no, you don't talk slow, dude. And that's my thing with stand-up. Because when I'm up there on stand-up, I got to let that moment ride it out, make it long, don't rush the joke. Because I'm like, I'm giving y'all this, y'all laughing, let me get to the next one. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was dealing with. You probably seen on stage, like, okay, damn, I got to give him something else. So, you have to structure that conversation and know how to use your words and 
you can, you know, start using your communication. And that's one thing I had to learn, like, like, and, but, when you said those words, like, but, like, and, we said it a lot, but if you stop and think and just talk, it'll come out smoother. Yeah, like the other thing that people miss, and I learned this doing TV, is that if you slow down, to you, you feel really slow, but to the people listening to yeah. you, you don't. Yeah. Right, and because you slow down, you can stop saying like and but, because all those things do is hold a place for you to think. Mm -hmm. You know, and so you've done a good job of just recognizing that already. You know, you mentioned the job, right? They say, okay, you gotta do this job or stop making videos. Mm -hmm. What was your worst job though? Because you said that was like the best job you had. My worst job was working. <laughs> Period? Yes. So that's why you always quit, because you just didn't like work? The only reason I kept a job was because of my personality. And y'all probably all done seen that around everywhere in locker rooms and no set. Like, like I don't, I, like, you're, you suck at this job, but you're a good person. So I was that person. Like, hey, this nigga's so funny. Let's just keep him around. But he ain't, he ain't shit. He can't work. Like, <laughs> and I was doing water department, like, down there in the tunnels and cutting a, the pipe and lifting up pipe and water and... I should have been fired the first day, like, <laughs> but my personality got me so far because I was always just, just being me and learn how to be me and like, damn, like I, you know, like, I'm doing this wrong, but look, but you know, and it's just like your learning your personality is one thing, and that's one thing that we don't, can't nobody teach us how to learn our personality. Right. We get, learn as we go and as we go through things. And and bro, to that point, when you joke a lot, you you from Atlanta. Roasting Jones. You from Kansas City. I mean, Kansas City, moved. but you live in Atlanta. You're gonna get me hurt. My bad. Yeah, yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. All y'all got is that big ass outside mall. That was all this there when we went to Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Big ass That's outside it. mall. Yeah. But you live in Atlanta, so I'm from Atlanta. Right. And it's Jones and it's roast. And when you're funny, you gotta be able to go with people. Like yeah. you said, you couldn't read and write. Well, how old was this when you couldn't read or write? Well, I was still, what? You first still grade? Oh, that's early on, not bro. No, I thought you were high school. On. No, it went all the way up to high school. You couldn't read in high school? No, I'm. I, Can you read now? I, I'm there. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, for real, there ain't nothing on that paper. Though, when he's <laughs> you just hold it up. I made them my enemies, and that's what's word. Like that was my problem because I didn't want to read or pick up a book. It was just like, I don't want to. I don't want to mess with it. And y'all got kids, and y'all just yeah. like you got. And my mama wasn't pressuring me to do it, so she not pressing me to do homework. Then she, I ain't doing it, you know. Yeah. So. But it later on affects you. So me skipping out on that affect me. So you gotta watch what you do because you only gonna hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. So and uh, you know, and it's a such thing. I feel like I'm dyslexic too. Like because as as I think when I read too, I be trying to create the word. So as I'm reading, I put my own word there because that's just how my brain works. When I think through comedy, and I'm creating this. Like as I'm reading, like that's not the word because that's I feel like this is what the word should be. So it's something that you know I was dealing with. Speaking of that, I was gonna say. When you do mess with people, joke with people and all that, because we brought up Southside and Herbo, mm -hmm. um, Blueface, mm -hmm. you know, see how it was edited, it seemed like he was pissed the hell off. Right. You did the, the pranks in Walmart where I seen you tell somebody I'm gonna slap the fuck out of you, and right. the dude was like, Right. You gonna slap the fuck out of who? Right. Like, is, is it any real, like, have you really gotten the fights? Have you ever had no, real no, I read the energy. Hmm? I read the energy. I know who to mess with, who not. Like, if I send you at Walmart, I'll do something because you got something to live for. You're going to be like, hey, back up, you know? But some people really got to get home. And some people really, like, you try the wrong one. Like, I'm ready today. Anybody can get it. So I just read the energy. And I used to I used to talk to them for a long time, warm them up, and then hit them with it. Like, okay, okay, what the hell wrong with you? So that's one thing I used to do was read the energy of who I'm talking to in front of me. I wasn't reckless. And it was time I probably follow somebody around Walmart for five, ten minutes and be like, okay, They've been on the phone, they kind of like, they they nice. I hear them on the phone talking, they they focus. Like, they but they trying to get some lace Marco, chips and get you know that's how people get the cops called on them. They didn't know, though. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that, so it wasn't that. You can't just yeah, follow was, like, people like, wrong. He, he was picking up. Hey, he, hey he, creepily, he, he, he's a scout. Nah, but it, yeah, it was just that. It was like, okay, yeah, just, you know, I'm looking and I'm shopping, you know, and it was like, okay, this is one person to get. Yeah. And the good thing is, it was just a funny moment. After it happened, it was still to do these pranks and be respectful. You know, not to hit on, not to put them in this. And that's why I created, it's a mindset thing because your mind, you can walk away from it when it comes to conversation. So I never made somebody feel like they got to do something or respond to me. You know, some of myself, you can walk away. And sometimes people did and that footage didn't get put out because it wouldn't work. You said like there was, there was a guy, you said there was an old dude that had a gun though, huh? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. 
I thought, I, thought, I thought you could read the room. <laughs> you didn't read that in the room. He had it on. <laughs> what happened? I, he was in that little thing. So when he started doing that, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I gotta. <laughs> he was in that beeper thing, one of the old schools. Like, yeah, he yeah, he was tugging for it. But thank God I got away. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you I'm smart sweet. enough to know when somebody do that. I don't give a care if it's not there or not. I'm gone. Like, even if you fake clustering, I'm gone. Like, I'm, you got it. Because one of these, um, one of those pranksters got shot at in the mall or something, like in the belly. Mm -hmm. yeah, you seen that one on? But certain people was doing reckless things and I had a skill to it. And that's why I feel like I got so much respected because it was so calm. And it was to a point where I do something to somebody like, oh, you got my grandma, that was funny. Like, you know, like she laughed at it afterwards. Not, you got my grandma, like you got me fucked up. Like, don't me, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I used to be able to read the room and be like, okay, I'll talk to somebody and be like, oh, how you been at the church? And they talking to me, but I'm on the phone. So I used to have to think of respectful pranks and to do it the right way, you know? So it was skill, and that's my brother, he been with me from the jump, and we used to just think of how you can be respectful and still make them look like a cool fool, like, okay, you got me. So I wasn't reckless, like, yeah, I gotta do this, I wasn't, you know, so. So ain't no beef, nah. nobody you mess with? Nah, 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 it's you cool. good. You cool, blue yeah. face see you out dapping up? Yeah, it's good, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the thing. That's like I was, I was yeah. asking about. When you be funny, some people don't take it the right way, but I think you explained it perfectly. Like, it's not disrespectful. It's just they understand it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. And sometimes it's just like make you walk away like, oh, yeah, you just threw something on me that wasn't even real, you know? Like, yeah. like you know, even talking to Chris Brown, Chris Brown told me he was just like, you was the only person that I wanted to sit down with for my, you know, my debut album because I love how you talk to people and I love where you, how you handle your content. And it was just dope to hear that from him. And you know, sitting down with Nicki Minaj, I gotta be doing something right to be able to, I'm gonna sit down with him, you know? And I had to, it's a character in me. Once I put on that suit, I go in it and it's just like, okay, we about to go at it. Like, you know, but it's, it's a good going at it. I guess that's my question because you've had some huge, some big, big, big names. Yeah. Do you have a, a management team or booking agent or, or do they reach out to you? DMing. Sometimes I was DMing them like, hey, let's do this. Or I started up some stuff too. Like Michael B. Jordan. I was just like, y'all got a movie coming out with Michael B. Jordan. And like, he like respond, like, no, you don't. And then it's just like start like a narrative to get their attention. Like Nicki Minaj, I went on her live and I caught her like, I got some things to talk to you about. So creating a storyline too with it. And then when we sit down, that too, you know? So genius. It also helps though, I mean, one, that you're good at your job, you're funny and you're successful and popular, mm -hmm. you know? Like if you had two followers and you weren't good at your show, they wouldn't do it. Right. But I do want to ask you a question and this is taking it back a little bit. You know, you mentioned, you know, not loving to work or not being forced to do schoolwork, maybe being uh, dyslexic. How much did that help your creativity though? Cause you said, sometimes I'm reading and I'm making up the words. Yeah. How much did doing those things help you with your creativity? A lot, and it's a gift and a curse again because sometimes I had to slow down and now I'm getting bigger. I had to take help from my team and writers and going in with an agenda. So like right now I'm just going in and winging it, but if I put structure to it, it'll be like, oh, let's turn it up. So now I have to understand like I'm gonna get help or I'm gonna get people that be like, oh, you should do this. And my mind was just so much on me. Like I don't want to fail, so I'm only listening to me. But the bigger you get, you have to start listening to the room and listening to let's try this and do that. And, writing too, you know? So that's one thing I have to do now with stepping out of my element of how I got here and focus on how to get to the next level and take help. Freddie T, it's the new year, you know? And I ain't got but one resolution. All I'm doing is getting with our partners over at DraftKings, brother, and I'm signing up right now. I'm using the promo code PIVOT, and I'm making a $5 bet because I will instantly get $150 in bonus bets. I see, it is the new year, but it's the same, same game parlays. <laughs> Listen. If DraftKings Sportsbook isn't in your area, don't worry. We still got DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Go get in the game. And remember, take out your mobile devices, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Place a $5 bet with the promo code PIVOT. You get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Happy New Year. You know, when we do shows together, like we actually get to talk and we learn things about each other and it was really cool. And we basically just made him everybody's emotional support pet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I'm having a bad day, 
I want to talk to Chan because Chan's yeah. going to make you feel better. He's going to make you laugh. He's going to make it light. You know, the same thing, Freddie T, our producer, Alicia as well. And then one day he was just saying, he was like, you know, man, sometimes like the funny dude need to be checked on too. Yeah. And, and he, yeah. he does certain things because he has certain insecurities. And you mentioned that. What are your insecurities now as you become more public? Because mm -hmm. now people pick you apart mm -hmm. differently. Do you still feel certain things and you're like, okay, this is something I have to get over or I'm not comfortable with this part of myself? Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And like even being able to like at the airport and if I'm running slow or going through something, people like, let's take a picture or doing this and I'm not in a good mood. I have to, you know, I feel like I got to cater to them because you need people. The farther you get and you can't get away from them. So I feel like I have to control my feelings and understand that this is the one moment for them that they run into me. So give them what they want. Mm -hmm. And that's my thing, where it's like, when I run into somebody, I feel like I gotta make them smile, I gotta make them laugh. So I'm like, when I see them, I gotta do something to leave them. Like he actually, you know, like he got it. Like he, that's who he is in real life, cause it is. So that's the thing that I have to learn too. Cause sometimes, you know, it's gonna get to a point where I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, damn, I'm so used to, you know, stopping and taking pictures. And then, you know, we have festivals and I'm like, let me get with them, let me get this, let me do this. And they're like, you know, they support me, so I have to, I feel like I gotta touch everybody that won't that support me. Cause another thing we was talk we talked about before, well, like when you can crank up, like you say, you're having a bad day, arguing with your lady, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you see that person come out the bathroom and just start smiling when they see your face, cause you done made them laugh for years. Yeah, yeah. And you can crank up and you can go, you can get that energy all of a sudden, and you can just be, you know what I'm saying? You can be funny Marco again. You don't gotta just be Marco, you can be funny Marco. Right. I feel as if and I've I've heard as if you crank up more for your fans than you do for your loved ones. Yeah. You take so much energy away f to impress them mm -hmm. that you get home and you dead. Like, yeah. we want Funny Marco at home too. Yeah. I do you feel that. Do you feel that yeah, happen? Yeah, I feel that way. Yeah. And I just, it's hibernating. I'll be in that room. And you're right. That's funny that you say that. And I had to, I'm actually looking into going into therapy just to be able to, you know, help me in just learn to talk to somebody, you know what I'm saying? So it's a job that, where we from, when you hear therapy, it's like you're in trouble or something wrong with you, but it's okay to probably just do it. Ooh. You got boo-boo? Went to the bathroom. Y'all got it? Okay, he did a Rick Ross thing. No, I'm gonna get my my, my funny Marco. Uh, bro, I'm a fan, you see I'm quoting all this shit you do. No, he no, need no, to know I, RC I, I ain't know, got no You got personality. I'm a huge fan. No, nah, you got personality. Why do none of your hats ever fit? There's things I go through. I just be going through a lot when it comes to my grandma. She passed away. So it's a lot on my mind. So I don't want to close it. And that makes your hair grow. And you never buy a hat that could fit the growth. Nah, because I'm going through stuff. And it keeps growing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just think about if you're homeless, why not rob a bank? Because if you get away with it, you can get the money. But if you get caught, you got a home. You do this shit too, you gotta put your fan. <laughs> do you pull women? Like, I can't see it. Do I get women? Uh, I think my personality do. And some women just look past my looks and understand that I'm a good person. And I just think about them. To get a woman, make a woman love herself, she gonna love you. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's the hat he was talking about. What, what are you doing, bro? I'm gonna be Damn, Marco. Be oh. You look homeless. <laughs> Damn. But you look clean homeless. Did your mama tell you talk to people like that? And she didn't. She didn't? No. It's not nice? I know. Speaking of your mom. Anybody ever told you you look like Ray J? Like who? Ray J. Wait a minute. That's his song. It's a great song. When you were growing up, did you ever see this man coming out of your house? <laughs> I'm pretty sure if he was around, my mama would have. I could say what I want to say. Yeah. She would have fucked him. Do you ever talk house. to him now? He got bigger now. That's not the same one from Love and Basketball. It is. No, he bigger now. And they said he raising Kane and Daddy too. Yeah. 
on the show. People used to say I look like him. I just asked, did you ever see him? Him? <laughs> Why don't you have a picture of Seal? Because I didn't want to make fun of your skin. It's me. You can't make fun of Wes only. But your sister got better skin than you. No, nah, because I got tough skin. Oh, it's tough. Can I ask you a question? You just did. Another one? You can. We all know that Michelle Obama is married to the former president. Correct. Now, but what's her first husband's full name? I don't really pay attention to married with women. I respect them. Why? Because they married. But she was the first lady. My first lady was my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I have another question. What are... You can't read either. A Christmas tree's favorite treats. Candy canes. Ornaments. <laughs> Mints. What? Ornaments. Ornaments. Oh, M I N T. That's a good one. Thank you. I'm gonna get back to this box. Bro, you, be wearing, you be wearing them. Them are comfortable. <laughs> yeah, That's what I tried to say. Yeah. I got, <laughs> on the, hating on the new balance. I got one more question. <laughs> Just go ahead. Were you sad when Usher? Didn't want to put a baby in your sister? Mm -mm. I was sad when he hugged Kiki Palmer. When he what? Hugged Kiki Palmer, because that's my crush. You think Kiki Palmer would like me? No. You're not her type. Your jester off. I what? Your jester is off. I think you like my outfit? I don't. I got it from a guy that do my favorite show. He dressed like this. Mm -hmm. What do you do for a living? I don't like work. All right. So do you feel like you're better than everybody in the room? Yes. Why? Because I don't care about everybody else in the room. All right. It's about me. It is. You know how far that's going to go? It was far enough to get you here. You didn't get me here. Yes, I did. No, oh, you didn't? Yes, I did. You're here. I'm starting to cry because I feel like so much. It's hard to talk to you. I can smell it from here. <laughs> smell what? <laughs> Just <don't. laughs> Where in the fuck did you get the stone face from? Where did you get the stone face from? But that shit's funny. What is? No, I'm really crying. It's really he terrible. <laughs> He's terrible. Yeah, dude. and it just hurt that you tried to impress me, <laughs> and it didn't go good. You crying, bro? Yeah. Wait. I wasn't trying. Oh, wait, wait. Time. I wasn't trying to impress yeah. you. Was... Marco 2.0. Mm -hmm. Let me. What? What? What's under your uh, blazer? You got to be tougher than that. Fifty. <laughs> no, I'm just mad that I. Yeah, he had one job and he didn't fucking do it. <laughs> I did it to the best of my ability. No, that was not the best. I'm I, fucked up. He got on the he got on the G when he tank top on dude. <laughs> it's the only tank tops I wear. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go buy one of the raggedy white ones he wears. <laughs> we done had people cry on this show before. For real though. We got Marco crying because he's so upset. <laughs> Should I suck? <laughs> on the spot. You <laughs> think he got on the spot? We need to hurt Kevin Hart. Where you at? I ain't no more patience. He cried on the spot. <laughs> He's a natural. <laughs> God damn. I thought I tried. You tried. I tried. I'm a football player. Though. I'm about to forget. You accurate. did good, brother. I love the hat. And the thing is this, too. He funny as hell. Like, I couldn't hold it. Where you get he the checked. whole outfit from? I bought it. Where you get the jacket, the blazer from? Old Navy. Oh, boy. Have you ever been upset about your Matt rating? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. You never paid attention to it? No. You was never insecure about that? No. I never started you. That's cool. I ain't tripping. 
I just wanted to let you know. Oh, that don't bother me at all. Mm -hmm. I'm still a fan though. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah From a yeah, distance. I mean, you had to put you never, in, though. You like you never started to get somebody to cut your hair right. Oh, uh, it's I've been going through it with that. Yeah, like it's going, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I should start going to your barber and get fucked up too. Nah, you ain't gonna do that. And we got different faces. Nah, I'm talking about this. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm 44. You 30. Then I look 44, yeah, right? You, you older. Yeah. Yeah, you Stephen A, y'all. I'm going through it. Y'all should be. That's my body okay. older than my age. That's all right. <laughs> why don't you why don't you have furniture in your house? Cause I don't know what the hell I want to sit on. But on the real though, like what was I that? don't know what I want to sit on. What was <laughs> all right, can can we get you know, switch can the we whole get interview. Marco? Yeah, can we get the other Marco back that was doing what? the interview with the Pivot? I'm here now. <laughs> it's like turn, somebody jumped into his body. He done turned on. He done flipped. No, for real though, I do want to ask though, man. Like, I, you your first I don't grill. know what I don't know what to sit on, honestly. Not about that though, but like the feeling of it. Like you're mm -hmm. you're, you're a girl dad, and now, you know, your babies have somewhere to go that you earned. Mm -hmm. That that. Whether it was being funny, the dude that couldn't keep a job, the dude that couldn't read, has got himself to the point where he can now purchase his own home. The mom that was on Section 8, the pops that was in the street, you know what I mean? Like, uh, we had D1 on, and he said, thank God I don't look like what I've been through. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I look like what I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> really? But, like, for real, like, just to get to that point mm -hmm. and be able to... You know what I'm saying? To do that, man, it's an amazing accomplishment. Do you ever sit back right now and think, you know, I've come a long way, or do you feel like you have so much more to go? It's not time to reflect on that yet. I always keep going. So I haven't gotten to enjoy the moment yet because if I would have been like that, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at now. So I feel like it's going to be a moment. And I feel like that moment is when I get that red carpet debut and people are going to go see me at a movie theater. So I'm like, yeah, that's it. So I got a goal in my head that I want to reach. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a Tubi movie, I got it. And that's the, that's the future. That's what 2024, we're at the end of the year, 2024. Yeah. That's what it is for yeah. Marcos is the... Debut. Is the debut in that movie. Yeah. That Michael B. Jordan moment. Yeah. That Creed moment. But you got so much, but you got the stand up going. Yeah. You got to stand up, you're going to stay, you're going to stay doing your videos. But that's movies. selective. So that's when people come and see it and they enjoy that. But I want to be able to touch the world where it's like, I got to hear about that. I got to go see it now, you know? So the stand-up is limited where everybody can't get in there, you know? So once you be able to touch that room, I mean, I don't trust him. I was saying, I was you don't trust him? No. What Brother. size are those shoes, RC? <laughs> <laughs> what size are those fucking I shoes, I want to hear y'all flyers, too. Y'all, y'all, y'all like the bootleg version of Wilo and Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> we boo a lot of kids. Yeah, and I enjoy it. So keep this. So keep it right there, because I want to get somebody else their flowers, and you made me think of them. So Ocho and Unk got Nightcap, right? Man. And the new show's taking it. It's crazy. They was just talking about, well, Ocho and Unk, they was talking about eating booty. Right. You had Sukiana on your show. Right. And she'd be talking about the opposite of what they talk about. Exactly. Eating booty. Right. What side of the fence is funny, Marco? I just want to know where you at. Listen, this I'm, is really, I'm, I'm this living. is a Channing question. Hey, yeah, yeah, I be like, chilling. I'm looking like you, bro. Yeah. I'm yeah. like you. I observe everything. I do. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. Because there are some uh, kind of connections in there. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? What you eating? Nah, that's hair. I don't know. It's stuff that oh, I'm foaming now. I'm trying to figure out where you're going with oh, this. Oh, my God. What side of the fence are you on, bro? Wait, uh... I'm old school. I'm a 90s baby. So I done made it far with just the But play. 90s baby's freaky. No, Because it was that, a lot of not, drugs not in the street. That's what they doing now. There was a lot they, of drugs in yeah, the street. Yeah, but not what the they doing now. Like, my mama laid down to have me. Like, she got hit from the front right. to have me. <laughs> my brother, you know that. I was there. I got shot in there. <laughs> <laughs> you said you got shot. <laughs> yeah. You remember, you remember I conception. Remember, man. It wasn't back shots. It was straightforward. Penetration. Is that how you say it? <laughs> penetration. Yeah. Nah, but seriously though. <laughs> so I'm good with just penetration. Just from the front. One on one contact. <laughs> you trust me now? Yeah. More? That's you. Okay, better. 
You so, big ass New Balance though. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm old, so I, I'm a, I'm, I, I'm not, you know, like all of us grew up around a time where we needed phones, house phones, and all that, you know, like it's like we really old. Right. Definitely him, but I'm just saying like we actually are adjusting to the world, yeah. and not knowing that we're getting old. Yeah. yeah, but with that adjustment though, I just I jump in for the conversation though. With adjustment though, you got to keep up too. Yeah, sometimes or, you got to do some wild yeah, shit. And not, not sometimes. You got to keep. We got to do whatever, whatever, whatever's clever. You know what I'm saying? If somebody want to do some wild, freaky shit, I, I'm in. It I'm all in. If you locked in with them. Yeah, see, I've been married for 13 yeah, years. Yeah, so you you you've you been doing that freaky shit. Yeah, yeah, you got true. to. Yeah. So you whipped cream, cherry, and strawberry. We Ocho. just got a we just got a, a John a paddle boat with your feet paddle boat for Christmas for the kids. And that's why I said people not satisfied. I actually went into the sex store one time. There's so much stuff in here. Yeah, it's like God damn, like what, like why do y'all need all this? It's over a thousand items in there to get nastier and nastier. <laughs> yeah. One thing I couldn't do, they got these beads. You got whipped before? You jam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wow, did. he a freaky because, dude. But I wasn't. I, it wasn't me getting beat. I was playing a role of, you Batman? know, somebody bad though. I was a bad oh, man. Yeah. I snuck in the house. Yeah. And she caught me, and I'm like, don't call the, the police. Don't, don't call the police. Yeah, they know. They yeah. know. They know. And you yeah. just, you just Gotta went in. Flee the kids too. I'm about to say, I can't wait. I bought the paddleboard for my children. Only thing I could think about when I'm looking at it in the garage, waiting to put out Christmas Eve is I can't wait to get my wife on that paddle boat in the middle of that lake. Mm -hmm. Give her pure D hell. Are you gonna still be paddling? I don't know what's gonna happen because I've never had sex on a paddle boat, but I'm gonna show that paddle boat who's boss. You don't care about like anything getting out footage? Of me? Yeah. <sighs> I don't care, I give, I, shit, that's impressive. That, I'm impressing them. You're welcome almost. Yeah. If a footage gets out, it's your, it's your welcome to the world. But Tan. Cause people don't know how to really throw no, throw no meat no more. But that's that's my So what question. age y'all get out of like, all right, I need to lay back on sex? Cause I know y'all there, right? Nah. <laughs> what you mean there is in like I just like I, I ain't who I used to yeah. be. This, this <laughs> is the know? thing. What do you run? What, what you what, mean? What do you mean you're not who I mean, you used to be? You're only average, 30. On the average, how much should you have sex a week? Or do y'all like now when it comes to it, like you said you've changed. So tell me what's the difference in your change? Cause 30 is young to have had to make that change. I don't, I got probably Three times a week, Emmy. Three times a week. As opposed to just spread it out three times a week. That's it. So you used to do it more than three times a week. Yeah, because I was homeless, so I had to fuck to have a house to stay. So every girl I talked to had a home, and I had to, I had to do it right to be able to spend the night at our house and use our car. So and then when she catch on, I had to go to the next one. What do you run the mile then? I wouldn't really. I do long Nine distance. Minutes, I take minutes? my time. Like how how fast? Nah, like think, if you I, had to run fast. No, nah, I can't. I don't keep up with them. So if you any anything outside of nine minutes, it's not me. You ain't, you ain't fucking no. No, nah, cause I I always go to my who at. I go to a girl house. I see the apartment. Scope out the car, and I tell myself I can see myself living here, <laughs> and I do my thing to get in, <laughs> and it always worked. Do you do you adjust based on size of the house and model of the car? It was apartments a lot. I was in the hood, so okay. it was you know it was I had a lot of Hondas, mm -hmm. Impalas. Impalas you know. are nice. Yeah, they was good back then. Yeah. yeah. So, but the women now, I, I went back and I, the ones I did was such. I gave them some money. Like I appreciate you for giving me a home to stay. So I had blessed them, like you know, and that's why I give back a lot now because I used to get you know. I think it's different. You already, what you're saying. you already paid them. Hmm? You paid them in, in meat. You don't need to pay them again. No, no, no. It's something like when when you use somebody's car and bring it back on eat, like you just like <laughs> that was me. That was just wrong. Yeah. 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 I so, say it never slow down, brother. Hey, was it Gilly talking about people like him? Gilly did a whole <laughs> post about people like him. Yeah, that get was. to just stay in a chick house just to lay meat down. Yeah, that was me. That that don't do no I work. I was a good stepdaddy too. When they had kids, I used to bring them toys first. When I come over, I buy them a toy, and I'd be like, "Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? What do you like?" And I'm at Walmart. I spent my last thirty dollars, get them an action figure, and that thirty dollars was an investment into you being able to live there. Yeah, and be a good stepdaddy. But you had to buy her a toy too. No, 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 just a kid. And There's if my baby daddy was alive, I didn't fuck with it because I couldn't fight. Damn. Yeah. So you ever run into any Chiefs out there? Any As in what? Chief players. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm locked in with a lot. It's, a, a, it's a tough season, but we're going to the Super Bowl. Nah, yeah. I'm trying to get I'm to want to sit down with Patrick Mahomes. Not Travis. Yeah, him too. Yeah? 
and uh, what's his name? Tony. I want to sit down with Tony. Tony. Kadarius Tony. He's been dropping a lot. Oh, wow. When, when, I don't think, though, you're sort of interviewing and the way you interact with people would work well with Kadarius at this moment. You know, like he's, he, he might be a little high strung nah, at this it's time. Not, it's called, it's energy. Only real Chiefs fans want to worry about, talk about the drops. Everybody else in the world want to talk about Travis and Taylor. What you think about Taylor, Swift, I, and I, Travis? I think Scott? he probably regret just exposing that. There's a lot going on. I feel like if he could, he'd take it back and just keep it low key. Ain't no keeping it low key with the, one of the most famous women in the world. It, it, it's a way he could, if he could take it back from once they announced it, I think he would. But if you had a, it, any girl you were dating, and if you were serious about Kiki her, if, Kiki, if you were dating Kiki Speaking Palmer, to right, right, you and Kiki Palmer are a thing. Mm -hmm. You would tell Kiki Palmer she couldn't come to your comedy show. I'm not, but you're gonna. It's gonna wear somebody else's jersey to throw it off. So you think Taylor Swift should wear Kadarius Tony jersey, but Patrick Mahomes is already married. She should just wear the jersey. I'm a fan of Patrick Mahomes, and I'm cool with his wife. Mm. And then now Travis don't have to. But I think immediately people would say Patrick should hook Taylor up with Travis, so then it would become a thing. Right now, that ain't my type. I do that. Like, How can he say that's not his type, though? You will have to. That's the impression that you have to give off. And it would be believable because Kelsey was with a thick black woman and got with a little skinny white girl. He could have thrown off he with that black girl. It's, it's a good part. It's all about personality. No, nah, it's not. Yeah, it is. Because nowadays you got to get with somebody that love theyself. I agree. But you got to be you physically yourself, you love attractive. Me. Some people don't know how to love themselves yet. And we don't know. So you seem like a, a, a guy that just lives the best he can. Yeah. And does what he does in the best way possible. Do you have any New Year's resolutions, though? I can say, uh, Kiki Palmer. I want <laughs> Kiki Palmer. <laughs> say it. My inner almost told on myself, but I, I can't do that. So I had to tell y'all off camera what I got to change. I but can't expose that. You live your life for the world. I do. Okay, well, how about this then? We'll go back. What do you think was your biggest pivot? The thing you did? <laughs> he, he, he thirsty. <laughs> Symbiotica got him right. <laughs> Uh, it was good talking to y'all, man. I love y'all. <laughs> it was good. It's good. It's good. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. I love y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you. hate dudes, man. <laughs> I love it. Hey, <laughs> y'all, I was too comfortable with y'all. I was about to speak. <laughs> hey. I was about to speak. Uh, yeah, that's what camera, you're here for, to speak. Yeah, not some stuff I just can't. That's what the pivot is uh, about, No, because that's what gets you. You get on the interviews, and then you get comfortable. Like, y'all, you warm you up. And then I'm getting text messages. Like, what the fuck is this? That's, yeah. that's the shit. I even, I bought a jacket for you. Yeah, you did. I like it. You yeah. didn't do a good job. <laughs> See, but that's that's the pivot, though. <laughs> that's the show. Marvin, I kind of did a good show. job, like a little no, bit. No, no, you, you did your thing. You know you the goat, I can't be bro. no comedian. Nah, yeah, like you're not no comedian. You're you crying, dude, really. I thought it was you cool. Nah, you did a good job with the image. Hold up. Limitless. Take a simmer guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. On the mission, got me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a simmer guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up.